I will never shut up about how fun speedrunning anime games is. The anime game speedrunning community is awesome. There's a full Discord server if you guys want to join and try it out. And I really think a lot of people enjoy anime games and they play a lot of competitive anime games too. But this side of speedrunning is very underlooked. Now, if you've been around before, you've probably seen me speedrunning Demon Slayer. I really enjoy that speedrun. And you know that I've been looking for a new game to run. And I tried out Storm 4, didn't really like the speedrun of that game. So next on my list was One Piece World Seeker. This is a really fun speedrun. I looked at the leaderboards and the world record is currently at 1 hour 33, so it's a slightly longer run than Demon Slayer, but definitely very doable. And then my first run was almost three hours long, so that took a while. Uh, obviously, I didn't know what I was doing and I got lost a bunch of times, so for my second run, I improved a lot. Almost a full hour. I'm definitely feeling good about this, so let's try it once more and see if we can improve even further. The timer starts when you hit new game, beginner difficulty. There are leaderboards for other difficulties. I usually just look at whatever's the fastest time because a faster time means a better speedrunner. After skipping a couple of cutscenes, this is easily the worst part of the speedrun, which is the tutorial. The game gates you from a lot of your abilities and only lets you use a couple of them in order for you to learn the game. Not a lot of fun, but you can get through it pretty fast. It's not until the middle of chapter one that you unlock one of the abilities that will define combat and kind of makes the speedrun a third person shooter. That is the Gomu Gomu pistol. Get Getting headshots like this is easily the fastest way to bring down enemies. We rescue Chopper from the store and we're on our way to chapter 2. In this speedrun you'll be grappling a lot, especially at the start, which is part of the reason why I like this speedrun because I think the movement and the traversal in One Piece World Seeker is really excellent. I mean, not yet but we'll get there for sure. We make our way to the sunny, we talk to Chopper who tells us about an injured guy. Turns out that injured guy was being ambushed by some pirates. And this is when we get the ability to change modes. We're gonna spend most of the speed run in armament mode because it just deals more damage when you get headshots like this. This is our first boss fight, but we still don't have many abilities. So it's mostly just gonna be Gomu Gomu pistol. And once the meter runs out, we go back to punching and kicking. And from there, we have a very long run to the Jade Bridge where we're gonna find a little Marine outpost knock on this door which will trigger the first real boss fight which is against Smoker. Now this is an interesting boss fight. First thing you do is grapple onto that point and just fall down right next to the explosive barrel. Now sometimes the enemies will attack the barrel and blow themselves up but when that doesn't happen just blow the barrel yourself and that's fine. Smoker will be stunned, throw a couple of pistols, build enough meter to finally unleash a special attack which we just unlocked. And it's from this point that the speedrun really becomes awesome because we unlock the Gomu Gomu rocket which we upgrade immediately in the skill tree. And now we are flying. This is what I love about this game. It's sort of a grappling hook type of system. It does remind me a little bit of Spider-Man, but it's also unique in its own way. Traveling the open world like this is definitely a lot of fun and one of this game's strongest points. We grapple our way into Steel City where we're gonna unlock fast traveling and we're gonna fast travel a lot during the speedrun. Here we have to talk to a couple of NPCs, just make our way from waypoint to waypoint and uh oh, that wasn't meant to happen. This portion of the speedrun is mostly going from point A to point B, discovering various parts of the city. Sometimes it asks you to find a couple of NPCs and you just gotta know where they are. And this is why my first speedrun took almost three hours. I had no idea where any of these guys were. We find Nami and now it's time to bring the rest of the crew back together. First up, Frankie. Frankie is all the way in the sea prison, which isn't an island that you can only access through this bridge, but it's okay because this bridge is a lot of fun to traverse. We get inside the prison and the first thing we're gonna do is actually going to be unlocking one of the skills. We're gonna unlock the UFO, which is gonna allow us to hover for a little bit, and that's gonna help with exploration while down at the prison. We're gonna have to interact with these panels a lot, and it's okay if we get shot by marines, as long as they don't have shotguns, because those will knock us down. Using observation hockey, we can quickly find the next panel and up. I swear to god I pressed the button. Interact with this panel, which we're gonna need to repeat a couple more times until eventually we reach the bottom of this prison, triggering the pacifist, the boss fight. For this fight, we're gonna unlock Gum Gum Eagle, and it goes pretty much like the last boss fight. We're gonna start with some pistols, and then we're gonna build some meter with some punches until eventually we get the two bars, which allows us to do this special. This special is the absolute boss killer. You're gonna be using it a lot in this run. We rescue Frankie and now it's time to rescue the rest. From this point, I'm not really sure what you should do as far as talents go, but I thought I wasn't building meter fast enough, so I'm gonna buff that a little bit. Maybe that will make fights go faster. And if we zoom out of the map, you'll see that there are a bunch of red quest marks. These are for all the Straw Hat crew members, and we're gonna start with this one, which is Zoro and Robin. Before we get to it though, what we wanna do is get two carrots. These are gonna be required for a future quest, and this is where RNG starts to kick in. I got a carrot right away, but then I got a 
cabbage and a floral nectar before I finally got my second carrot. Lost a couple of seconds there, but no big deal. We make our way to Zoro, and this is your first encounter with these robots, which are easily the most annoying enemy in the entire game. Because if you hit them while they're flying, they're knocked down, and while they're knocked down, they cannot be damaged for a really long time. That's pretty much Zoro's quest for Robin, we're gonna have to get inside the prison. And we can quickly do so by grappling around, until we get to the gate where we just interact with it. Doesn't matter if we get shot, but unfortunately we're gonna get interrupted by Tashiji. I start by getting two headshots on the marines, and then a bunch of headshots on Tashiji, who is just gonna die to an easy Red Hawk. Robin has been rescued. Up next, we talk to this guy in Sapphire Town. That's gonna trigger the Brook side quest, but first we're actually gonna get Usopp. Usopp is in the mining village, and after you talk to him, he tells you to gather some materials from inside the mine. You gotta know where these are ahead of time, but basically you just need three of them, and then leave the mine to meet up with them again. After you meet up with them, they tell you to meet them at the top of the mountain, and instead of climbing the mountain, I'm just gonna fast travel. They've built this huge cannon, which will come into play later in the story, but before doing so I unlock this skill which gives me slow motion and this even though it doesn't slow down the timer of the speedrun it slows down the enemies and makes them a bit more predictable and easy to hit headshots with. Fast travel back to the mine town, finish Usopp's quest, and now let's fly over to the graveyard. There are stories of a ghost sighting around the graveyard which can only mean one thing, Brook is probably around. After defeating some pirates on the other side of the river, you return to the graveyard where you'll finally meet Brook. And the final quest we have left is Sanji's. First thing Sanji asks you to do is to find this dude's house. I lost so much time looking for this house in my first run, but yeah, now I know exactly where it is. From there we're gonna meet this woman, and this is the woman that wants the spiky carrots that we gathered earlier. So this way we can just finish the quest right away, defeat the pirates at the cave, get that treasure, and get the Sanji quest done. The Straw Hats have been reunited, maybe there's a better pathing to this, I don't know, but this path felt pretty good to me. And after a quick trip back to Sapphire Town where you get ambushed by more of these robots, John decides to just disappear, but whenever she does this, you can always just find her at the graveyard, which after doing so opens up the next set of quests which you can tackle at your own pace in any order you want. So I started with this one called Divided We Stand and I completely forgot where I needed to go next. So I decide to fast travel to the plaza and start another quest called Warmongers and I have two ongoing quests and I just do the first step of Warmongers which is to go right next to where you were. And I remember for the previous quest the dudes were around here somewhere. I did waste some time looking at the map, ended up finding them, but yeah this was not optimal at all. After talking to a couple more guys around town, they tell you to go to the sea prison where you can finally finish this quest. Just gotta fight these two mini bosses, which goes as usual, a bunch of Gomu Gomu rockets into the the eagle to finish them off. Look at that damage. A couple more skills that I got in the meantime were a damage buff to my armament mode, the hockey special which is gonna come in handy against the robots later on, and a boost in focus which will allow us to stay in slow motion for longer. Oh and also every time we perfect block something it will trigger the slow motion automatically. From here we're gonna continue the warmongers quest, but first we gotta swing by the radio just to unlock that fast travel point. And then as I was swinging back, unfortunately what happened was I fell into the lake. And this was a major time loss because the game puts you back where you last touched the ground and last time I touched the ground was next to the radio tower so it had been a while that was very very unfortunate so the warmongers quest has you meet with Sanji's brothers and it's easily the most boring quest in the whole speedrun basically you gotta tail Ichiji without him seeing you and he walks so slowly so you kind of just hang around in the rooftops until he finally reaches his destination at which point the boss fight begins and we get a couple of headshots while in slow motion that's gonna build enough meter for a level one but what what we really want is a level 2. So we're gonna perfect block this and then of course Eagle Storm and something happened and he didn't get hit. So that that was very unfortunate. The fight should have ended right there. Uh, unfortunately it's gonna run a bit longer. The next quest you start is Memory Lane. The first quest is just to meet up with this guy in Steel City and then meeting up with some other guys in the middle of the city itself. I just do those two steps and don't start any others and go straight to Emerald Town to start the next quest. Because both of these are gonna take place in the same location which is Halcom Port. In Halcom Port you can meet up with Buggy, he knows about treasure and stuff, and this is where you have the legendary boss fight against Kizaru. There's definitely some 
RNG on this one. He's gonna run away to the rooftop, and unfortunately I got hit. The goal here is to actually perfect block any of his attacks if he ever teleports away and shoots at you. I did get that perfect block, which allows me to grapple up and just unleash the special. We find the treasure that's right there, and we move on to the next quest that we started, which is memory lane, right next to where the treasure was. And now we only have two more quests to go. The first one is pretty straightforward. It's pretty much just go from point A to point B, defeat some robots, done. The other one in Ruby Town has you talking to a couple of NPCs and then going into the harbor. Now you must make your way into that boat without being detected. So we do a quick rocket and then slowly grapple into the boat, jumping down, triggering the cutscene. From there, you gotta go to the warehouse. There's a dude standing right in front of the door. Just get a headshot and finally rescue the villagers. Now, these six quests were such a major part of the speedrun that from this point on, it feels like you're almost at the end, even though there are 17 chapters total and we're still on chapter eight. Chapter eight is the Fujitora boss fight. We're gonna go into slow motion and he's gonna block all of our attacks, but this still builds our meter and that's all we need to unleash the eagle. A very fast fight, exactly how you're supposed to do it. Chapter 9 is pretty much just fast traveling around and grappling from point A to point B. Chapter 10 has you going into a new area, the canyon, because John has been captured by Lushi. This boss fight is also pretty straightforward. Get a few headshots. Unfortunately, I knock him down. I don't think this is something you want to do. You don't want to knock down opponents, but you want to build two bars so you can do this. Grapple around a bit more, fast travel to a couple of places, talk to a bunch of people, and then we arrive at chapter 13, the radio hijack. This is a pretty fun mission. First, you gotta infiltrate the tower. Then you gotta clear this floor of enemies. You can pretty much do it in slow motion before anyone even notices you. Then talk to Usopp. And then you gotta climb the tower as fast as possible because let's not forget, this is a speedrun. There are probably some better routes to climbing this tower. And in fact, I highly recommend you play through this game once while doing manual saves on every chapter. This is one of those that you will want to practice for sure. Once you arrive up there, all you gotta do is interact with the console. But these guys often interrupt me, so I usually clear them out before doing anything. From there, we jump all the way down to where Usopp was and finish the quest. In chapter 14, John is trapped in one of these suits, but it's always that one on the left, so you can always just focus on it. It's still pretty annoying to fight against because these robots, whenever they're knocked down, you just can't attack them for a while. But this is why we have our new ability, Haki, which is gonna knock down every single robot and allow you to get as many headshots as you want. While chasing the evil brother that did this to her, you were ambushed by some marines. And this is honestly one of the most fun combat encounters in the game because it just shows how powerful Luffy really is. After getting three bars, Conqueror's Haki is actually gonna kill a lot of folks. And I'm gonna use this opportunity to unlock some more talents that are gonna be useful not only in the future, but also that buff my gum gum shot and my slow motion. The enemies will keep spawning for a while. So the faster you are with these headshots, the better. I can definitely feel that mouse and keyboard are gonna be useful for these sections if you are running this game on PC. Chapter 15 is easily the chapter I hate the most in this game because it feels like the developers felt like their game was too short. So they just added nine missions in nine different locations where all you have to do is defeat a bunch of robots, the most annoying enemy in the entire game. There's not much to it. It's pretty much going to slow motion, punch them a bunch, use Conqueror's Hockey to stun them whenever possible, and just fast travel from location to location. Unless you're in the city, in that case, it is faster to just grapple around, but be careful because the city is full of snipers. And in fact, the snipers actually did this. You wanna die any slower, Luffy? Anyway, we take care of the robots. And now our next mission is to climb the mountain as fast as possible. Fast travel is disabled here. So what we're gonna do is just get hit by some guys. They're not attacking me, so I'm gonna attack instead. All I need is some meter anyway. And now I'm gonna use Gear 4th for the first time in this speedrun. Gear 4th pretty much allows you to fly for a limited amount of time. You have like six boosts that you can do before you're forced to land. So using those, we're gonna quickly climb the mountain and go up against what's supposed to be the toughest boss fight in this game, which is Sakazuki. Now, because we just used Gear 4th, we're not going to be able to build any meter for a while. So we're going to have to use a lot of headshots and a lot of slow motion. Also, my perfect guards are on point. But it's at this point when he's at half health that you're actually supposed to start building meter because the debuff should have run out by now. That is if you got the talents, which I did. But for some reason, I'm not building any meter. And then Sakazuki just does this. Look at his health. Are you kidding me? 
Now, we don't have to do the whole fight again, because fortunately the meter debuff is gone. I don't like that every time you die, the game defaults you back to the observation hockey mode, and you have to manually switch to armament. But anyway, all that matters is building the meter. One of these moves is going to be enough to defeat him. And we're finally in the sky prison, going up against the final boss fight. Now, Isaac here, he is annoying. He's completely invulnerable except for when he's about to attack. So what you gotta do is keep your reticle on him. And if he does this melee attack, you can perfect block him and counter, which triggers this cutscene. You gotta trigger a cutscene four times in order to progress in this boss fight. And whenever he does this from a distance, all you gotta do is just shoot him with a gum gum pistol. We do that four times, he gets a bigger robot. So I'm just gonna perfect guard him and unleash the special attack, which didn't kill him for some reason. I don't know why he was knocked down, but that was not supposed to happen. Anyway, we got two bars again, but he's gonna fire the laser of death. And yes, we are going to die again. <sighs> We respawn and we got the two bars again, so we we're gonna unleash the special, but I didn't notice that the game switched my modes once again. You see that blue eye on the bottom left? That's not supposed to be blue, that's supposed to be a red fist. And that's why that special didn't kill him. That's fine, we're gonna fix this in the next attack, and there goes Isaac. I stopped the timer a bit too late, you're supposed to stop it on the first black frame, and that happened at 1.48.30. And that's gonna put me in the fifth place on the leaderboards, and it is right now the best time on PlayStation. Now this run is clearly not optimal. I died a few times, I fell in the river a couple of times too. There's still stuff to improve, but for me to shave off 15 minutes to try and get their world record, I don't think that's possible on PlayStation. I mean, I don't know how much of an advantage I have on PlayStation 5 over PlayStation 4, I don't know how much longer the loading screens were, but this game does not feel optimized at all for the new console. I mean, I think it's still running at under 30 FPS, and it's not just that the loading screens are faster on PC, every single time the game fades to black on every dialogue scene, it is a couple of seconds slower even on PS5. Those couple of seconds stack up because there are a lot of dialogue scenes in the speedrun. So I enjoy the speedrun a lot and I might do it again, but I think I'm gonna wait for this game to go on sale on Steam. Because if I wanna go for that world record, I think I need the PC version. And again, I cannot stress it enough. Speedrunning anime games is awesome. There's a great community behind it. Join the Discord and just run whatever your favorite game is. I mean, even World Seeker, I gave it a C back when I reviewed it, but speedrunning it has given me a whole new appreciation for this game, especially since I don't have to do do that much combat. If you have any games that you'd like me to look at as far as speedrunning goes, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku and I'll see you next time. Bye!